You're listening to the Thomas Erickson Podcast. And this is Fenris. I don't know if you're lucky or not. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Thomas Eriksson podcast. Uh, and uh, that is me, Thomas Eriksson. Uh, you may know me also as the musician and artist behind the band uh, Mork, which is a Norwegian black metal band. Um, Mork has been releasing uh, music now since 2013 officially. And uh, today uh, the band has uh, five full-length albums out via Peaceville Records and uh, a few EPs and singles and stuff like that. Plenty of stuff for you guys to dive into if interested. And uh, I do, I do um, urge you to pick up each and every album. And you can do so over at the official web shop, which you can find in the links, I suppose, in the description below this video or online episode, where, where, wherever you find this podcast. I suppose there is links attached, hopefully, or else I've been, do, I've been doing a really bad job. At the web shop, you can also get merchandise, t-shirts and patches and stuff. So uh, thanks a lot for the support it's been a great weekend actually uh it's currently tuesday but uh, the um, the past saturday uh, mork went to stavanger in norway in the county rogaland and uh, we ha- held our very first black mass over there which was great i didn't really know what to expect but the room was fucking pumping and it was it was on fire. Uh, great reception over there in Stavanger at uh, the Helion Rock and Metal Pub. Thanks a lot, people. And the pub and the club in itself is located beautifully. It's uh, right there on the docks in Stavanger with the view out of the windows. It's in the second floor. And a nice cozy little stage and uh, great atmosphere in there. So thanks a lot, guys. Also, uh, thanks to our support act of the evening, which was uh, Kirke Grill, and uh, which is the brain brainchild of uh, Lille Troll. Cheers, guys! Uh, the show in Stavanger uh, can be considered by us as a, a warm-up show for the upcoming tour, which will happen in less than two weeks now. We will kick off in Halden, Norway, and we will end up in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark. And there's uh, plenty of Norwegian and Swedish shows and Danish ones in between those two. So um, head over to the web pages and Facebooks or whatnot to find out uh, if there's a show near you. Uh, and if there ain't a show near you, you should just hop on the train or something. Be there. The tour is called uh, Svart Nordisk Union and is a Morg headliner. And we have a very special guest, uh, Avsky, which is the up-and-coming Danish black metal band. Hopefully we will be able to see a lot of you out there. Uh, at least the ones who are able to visit these uh, venues, uh, which is basically people in Scandinavia, I suppose. Even though I've uh, seen comments and gotten messages that people are actually traveling to see us on the road now from other countries as well, which is uh, great. I'm looking forward to see you in the front row at one of these shows. I actually had a long and uh, great chat with uh, the legendary uh, Norwegian journalist uh, Tom Sjekresetter. Last night in my studio here. Uh, most of you probably do not know who he is, but he has a great name within Norwegian music and the mu- music industry up here. Uh, he he is doing a piece on me and uh, on Mork. Uh, 
just catching up on what's been going on uh, lately, the past year or so. And it's also a great opportunity to promote the show that's coming up uh, not this not this Friday, but next Friday, uh, November the 26th uh, in Halden at Vanvogna Kulturhus, uh, which will be the opening show of the, the tour that I mentioned earlier. It's nice to get some coverage in the local newspapers and stuff uh, every once in a while. As people say up here in Norway, you will never become a hero of your own hometown. But a uh, pat on the back every once in a while is uh, appreciated, obviously. So thank you, Tom. Tom and myself actually uh, have something uh, great in the works, uh, which have <laughs> has been in the works for a couple of years now, because uh, we we haven't really sealed the deal yet. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I will get back to that later. Another cool thing about uh, Tom is that he actually went to the infamous Sex Pistols show in Oslo in 1977. So he's old school. Uh, I'm I'm a huge Sex Pistols fan. Uh, I grew up on the Sex Pistols. Uh, that band actually got me into playing guitar and getting into music. So you never know how it starts off, you know, and how, where you will end up. So that's a funny one for me. And uh, also great to listen to his stories about uh, that gig and so on. You know, he was there back in the day. I was also told that he actually booked Hawkwind to uh, our hometown in 1975. A lot of history around uh, this man. Uh, perhaps a podcast episode once? I don't know. He's not that much into metal, but he has actually been... <laughs> because he's been working as a journalist in all these years, he, he has obviously bumped shoulders with a lot of metal. Uh, but he has a funny take on it. He's not a, the biggest metal fan, so he takes it all with a pinch of salt, which is quite funny. But... uh uh, let's see what happens. It's a great guy. A good friend of mine. Okay, I don't think I got that much more to promote, really. So I will just uh, move on into this week's episode. I suppose a lot of you has been wondering now whether this would be happening or not, since I've been been hinting and teasing a bit on the social medias. Well... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, or last week, the last weekend, I suppose, we went to visit uh, Snorreruk in his home, way up there in the middle of Norway, in in the middle of nowhere as well. And uh, yep, we did a podcast. Of course, we did. It was a great weekend. I actually got to listen through the new Thorns album which has been in the works for many, many, many years. And I'm not going to say it's on the verge of being uh, released or anything, because uh, I don't know. For all I know, it can be in the archives for even more years to come. But I heard it three times in total, and it sounds pretty complete to me. And it sounded fucking awesome for those of you who are into Thorns legendary guy and band and project he's an innovator in the Norwegian music and I would say I would say world music even so um yeah and I, we listen to a lot of uh, a lot of other kinds of music that he's been creating as well and he's a really really creative guy with a vivid imagination and a fun uh, guy to hang with we had a great, like I said, a great couple of days up there. Me, uh, Snorre, Marius, uh, and Harald. And those three guys together are actually the very first lineup of Thorns. Which is uh, quite cool. Because the guys were chipping in in the episode as well. I put up a couple of mics and we were four people in total there. So I think you can enjoy this conversation and 
Another funny thing is that uh, I think Snorre actually this might be his very first long form interview where he opens up and tells the story. And uh, I really appreciate that, obviously. A great guy, great story, fascinating story. So let's just do it. Let's jump in, jump into my talk here with uh, Snorre Ruk of Thorns. Så känner någon gulkorn för att köka den här. Men då vi ju norsk då. Ja, talking Norwegian. Okay, we're uh, we're going to speak English, yes. Um, can you you can introduce the podcast? Yeah, what is his name? Yeah, my name is Thomas. Yeah, this is Thomas podcast about metal. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Thomas Eriksson podcast. Thomas um, Eriksson podcast about metal. There yes, you yes, go. Yes. I'm sitting in the house of uh, Snorre Ruk right now, out in the middle of nor- nowhere. Yeah, in Norway. Norway. Yeah, Norway. Yeah. No, no way to Norway. No way to Norway. I'm going into the kitchen making some uh, hallucinogenic tea. Yes. Do you want some? I don't know. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> <laughs> I stick to the black try for now. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'm staring out the window here. And it's fucking fantastic view. We're uh, staring out onto a fjord, I suppose, guys. Yeah. I'm seated. Uh, I also have a Harald here, the original bass player in Thorns. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. And then Marius uh, Wold from uh, Thorns. Yes. A singer, right? Uh, yes, in Thorns, yes. Yeah? yeah? You were using your mouth? Yes. But you know Marius from before. Yeah. Um, and uh, Snorri obviously is an uh, important figure in uh, Norwegian black metal and uh, I, I would say just music, uh, culture and history in, in itself. That was the sound of nothing you want mm. to talk about. It's just mushrooms. Yeah, 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 <laughs> shrooms. <laughs> Plain salt. Yeah, he was, uh, you know, behind the band uh, Thorns, and he uh, has had a finger inside uh, mayhem, <laughs> Satyricon. That sounded quite weird, right? A finger yeah, he's, inside. He has fingered them all. Yeah, but he did. He did finger them with his guitar skills, mm. and I. Uh, I've had my finger in everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know. He has a reputation of being the one who created the original black metal riff, actually, and tremolo picking, which is quite fascinating. So, uh, but this uh, episode will be a bit different because now we're several people in a room, and uh, everyone can chip in. Yeah. Since you know the guy from way back. You can get some uh, juicy details. Yes, <laughs> spill the beans. <laughs> we, need, we need the dirt as well. And we're a bunch of gentlemen, ha- uh, gentlemen here drinking tea. Of course. Black chai at the moment, provided by Harald himself. Yeah. Yeah. Harald Eilert. Right? Yeah. Yep. Do we have an artist name? No. No. I never had. Me neither. Ah, no. Thomas Eriksson. Yeah. With corpse paint on, you know? Yeah, I never even used corpse paint. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just didn't play. But yeah, of course, uh, tea is the proper metal drink. Everybody it does. And you don't, uh, you don't mistreat your body with it. No, you know, tea. No. You know, I just, it's, uh, I, I told you guys before start, starting recording that I, I recently released my own coffee brand yeah, with the Mork yeah. band, you know, and um, I also at the same time, not planned at all, I had to cut back on the coffee a bit to keep out some caffeine on my body, mm. so I've been uh, on the tea wagon now, and uh, I, I'm trying to stick to it, yeah. but you know, every now and again I can have a cup of coffee, but not yeah. as much as before. Of course, I mean, enjoy what you do. Yeah. And then as long as you just... It's use and misuse, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, bruk or misbruk, yeah. as we say in Norwegian. Yeah. And uh, when you drink yeah. 10 cups of coffee a day, that's not good for my body at least. Probably. And uh, like I told you, yeah. when I skipped the coffee for a while, maybe a couple of weeks, and I tried a coffee cup again, I had two sips and I felt the rush of coffee in. And I never felt that before. Yeah. And that was constantly in my body stream, you know? Mm. 
That's scary, actually. So I was walking around with, you know, really hard heartbeats and uh, shaking hands. Uh, about time to slow down. Fun with the chemistry. Yes. Yep. The mixture was a bit off, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. How was the road trip up here? We did a podcast episode too, until yeah, the battery yeah. died. We were talking a lot about different things. Yeah. Not all of them uh, equally interesting, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, something well, for it's everyone. It's up to you to decide. Yeah? No, but it was a nice trip. I had a nice, good time. Nice to get to know you. You too, man. And we got to have a few beers when we landed here last yeah. night. And I suppose we'll do the same tonight. It looks like that's the plan. Yeah. This is a perfect weekend. Yeah. And today we went, even went on a sightseeing with uh, Snorre as a guide. And the first thing we did... This is uh, one more uh, silly fact for you guys out there. Uh, I guess... I suppose most of you know Free Willy, the, the movie about the uh, killer whale. Uh, he actually was let... Set, Kaiko? Set, yeah, Kaiko, he was set free into the ocean from America. And then he found his way way over here to a fjord up here in Norway, outside the window here. And he stranded himself. He was yeah, sick. he got stuck. He got stuck yeah. on the beach. And uh, I don't give a fuck, I will tell the truth there. Yeah. The, the, the facts that we've been served is that people were parting on top of him, <laughs> basically. Yeah. We don't know this for the truth. <laughs> and, and, and pouring, uh, pouring koshk, which is uh, coffee and uh, homebrew, uh, in the air hole. Coffee so he bridge. died. And then someone uh, dragged him out on the deep waters and blew him up with a dynamite stick and put him down like a ship. <laughs> but today, the point is, <laughs> today we went to the, the site where he actually was found... Um, um, what stranded, stranded stranded and they have put up this you know this grave a pile of stones as a, a grave mound yeah, yeah thank you very much your english is way better than mine and uh only me and harald get, got out of the car actually and went down there you lazy sods <laughs> it, was a, it was a raining it was a lightning yeah. experience that's so. good oh. yeah it was and it, the rain kept away the tears you know you can yeah, tell yeah. that we were crying i always do my crying in the rain <laughs> Do my crying in the rain. Oh yeah, and then we went to see a waterfall. Is there a name of the, of the waterfall? Yeah, it's called the waterfall. <laughs> the waterfall in English, you know. Ah, Fossen. Fossen. So now we're back. Yeah. Um, I need to ask you then, Mister. Yeah. Where are you from, and where did you grow up? How was the childhood? Uh, um, yeah, I grew up mostly in Trondheim. Um, some parts of my years as a kid I was in Oslo. Yeah. And on Ski, uh, where I actually had the uh, same friends as the schoolmates of Øystein. Euronymous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and his uh, classmates uh, lived in my street or the street next to me and I used to battle them a lot. <laughs> okay. so, so that was my connection to him back then. I, we didn't know each other at all, but we went to the same school. What age is that? I, I was uh, at first grade and he was at like fifth or sixth, I guess. Oh, so he's, he's way older than you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess four years. like four years only. Okay, yeah. So you didn't become known until later then? Yeah, we... Because the age gap is big when you're yeah, that yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, when you're so young. Yeah. Um, but uh, later we found out that we uh, actually uh, had some, uh, what do you call it? Ge Mutual geographical friends. connection. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, because we didn't live far from each other. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just a silly point. But uh, when I started uh, second grade, we moved back to Trondheim, yeah. which is far from Oslo, for those who don't know. Uh, how, many, how many hours by car? Seven? Eight? Seven. Nine? Seven. Seven, seven, seven hours seven, by car. Yeah. Um, and I grew up there on, a, what do you call it? Drabanti. 
Okay. Uh, suburbs. Suburbs. Yeah. Yes. Um, together with uh, Harjal and uh, some other friends, started to listen to noisy music, and uh, it was. Uh, we had started listening to some Venom Slayer, Exodus, all that. Uh, so you jumped straight into the extreme stuff, in a way. No, you, no, you, we you. started like uh, with Twisted Sister and Wasp and Iron Maiden, and uh, but it felt good, but not fulfilling. Yeah. But when we heard uh, Venom and Slayer and Exodus and Metallica and all that, it like yeah, this is the shit. It made sense. Yeah, it made it made uh, enough sense. Uh, <laughs> I remember when. Sense. Because I didn't like metal at all oh. uh, in, in those days, uh, and we had lots of friends who listened to yeah, like Motley Crue and, and Twisted Sister and, and all that stuff. Hair, hair, hair rock. Yeah. 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 And I kind of was a bit drawn to it because of kind of, and especially some of them that had the like darker lyrics, like, uh, some of uh, Iron Maiden and, and stuff, but I didn't like the music. But I was interested in, in the occultism and... and the imagery. Yeah. yeah. So when when he brought a magazine with a picture of the cover of uh, of uh, the Hell Awaits, no, not not Hell Awaits, but but uh, Welcome to Hell album from um, Venom. From Venom. Yeah. When you just had the Baphomet and, and you just looked at, and we both were looking at, oh, that must be so cool. That's <laughs> we have to, we have it's to an get awesome that. album yeah. cover today. It is. <coughs> and then then he he ordered them and then we started listening to it and then. That's the first time for me, at least, metal made any sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it felt real. Yeah. What was your first one that you heard in the more extreme vein? I think was it, it was. Yeah, I think Venom on. Uh, uh, I don't remember. It was on Sky Channel, a show with uh, Mick Wall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they played uh, Venom live. I remember from Combat Tour. Uh, Everyone is mentioning the combat. Tour. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, Ted mentioned. Yeah, that. yeah, I have that on uh, digitalized. Never seen it actually. Yeah, it's good. Ooh, okay, it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, uh, it's Venom Slayer Exodus uh, live. Three. Where is it recorded? D different places actually. Okay, I think yeah. uh, Slayer and Exodus is on a small stage, and Venom is on a big one. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, Typical. Yeah. What year is that? Uh, 85 or something? 86? I don't know, I don't know. 84, 86, I yeah. don't remember. Yeah. So that's the time you found it? Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. around there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went back and you, you found Welcome to Hell, Black Metal, and you bought those, obviously. Yeah, because actually that magazine is mentioning is like a girls magazine. Okay. With like music pop, pop and, and rock, pop, yeah. pop and rock magazine, uh, I, I thought at least it was for girls, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And on the back side there was like postal orders for uh, records, and one in three times they were only metal. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you had all the covers for Slayer, Venom, Venom Exodus, uh, Metallica on one page with all the titles on the song and we saw Satan, Hell, Devil, all the... The right words. The, the right words. words. <laughs> uh, trigger words. Trigger, trigger words. words. <laughs> so um, we had to get hold of that stuff. So we found uh, records on different record shops in Trondheim also. Um, and we hoarded yeah. what we could of interesting music. And uh, yeah, we started playing a little ourselves, or did we first get in contact with Mayhem and those guys? I think we had started playing before we got yeah. in touch with them. But yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah we ordered the Death Crush demo yeah. and cassette tape from them. That's yeah. when we first got in touch with them. That was like by uh, letters, Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the good, uh, you remember how we uh, sent the uh, money to them? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a cool story. Um, Let's hear it. We, 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 had this, we had this strange thing that... Um, I, I, I think you were the one who wrote them first. And then you got the response. And then I responded to their response to him. Okay. And then they responded to me. And then he responded... <laughs> Actually, they were just mishmash of uh, we, it, transaction. It made sense to us. We thought it was funny. I don't know if they did, but uh, <laughs> but, but in any way, we ordered the the um, Death Crush demo. Yeah, 
and they wanted money for it, of course. Um, so we we were what, 14? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So I went to the um, grocery store right next to us and, and for the first time in my life I bought condoms. Wow. And um, that's a big day. We yeah, that was a big day. And uh, <laughs> we, we cut out a big uh, dick from cardboard. Yeah, and, two two cardboards. Yeah, uh, and and then put uh, yeah. the response letter and the money inside there, and then put the condoms over, and then went to the post office. <laughs> 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 and it was uh, sizey as well. It yeah, was well, like I wasn't uh, that big, small. but it was like yeah, this was, or yeah. yeah. That's so good, good in the podcast. It was yeah. like this. <laughs> this big, this big. This big, yes, yes, yes. Look at my fingers. <laughs> okay, so you, when you got received the, the tape, yeah. what did you guys think about that? Ah, uh, horrendous. It was fantastic. Uh, we actually heard it on radio before uh, we ordered yeah, we it. We heard parts of it at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we knew what we were in for. And uh, yeah, I think we loved it. I did at least. At first was... hand. It was, for its time, really extreme. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. What 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 other stuff? What other bands did you have? I don't know, you, like Sarcophago and stuff like that. Where they they were going, right? Yeah. It was that the same time? I, I think there were demos with Sarcophago around, but not that early, yeah, maybe. But, but this was probably, this was more or less the first demo we yeah. got. Yeah. And, and and then we started trading more tapes later and then we got uh, especially you got um, um, early morbid angel demos and, and stuff like that. And uh, Yeah. So so we got more into it after that. But um, yeah. that was the first demo we It was a we kick were, getting yeah. a response from people you didn't know who made uh, fucked up music and yeah. uh, uh, yeah, it was an inspiring time, I remember. Yeah. But uh, how long did it take until you went down to them and like sought them out and stuff? Yeah, ma max a year. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 yeah, because we got in contact with them and they probably uh, experienced a little the same as us that, okay, we're on the same page here. So uh, we kept uh, frequent contact, I also, think. Also, it was, uh, I had an uncle who lived in the neighboring block from our uh, uh, necro butcher. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we went down one Easter, I think. Well, we didn't went, you stayed at your grandma and yeah, I stayed yeah, at yeah. my uncle's. And then we just uh, had written your own message. And it's like, yeah, well, William, we're coming down to visit. And they just told us, yeah, go over there and ring the doorbell. Uh, ring the doorbell a second time. Because he won't wake up the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that was when we went to visit the Negro Butcher. When yeah. was that? Is still eighties? Yeah, yeah. eighty eight or yeah. it is yeah, some like that. So he just took you in then and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. showed you around or Yeah yeah, and then we joined them for a rehearsal or did to visit them on, on their in the rehearsal room. And yeah. And it's, and, I yeah. think it's on one of these trips that I hook up with Marius as well because okay. we probably order and get in contact because of Mortem and order a demo from them and uh, um, I meet Marius in Oslo. But that had been to be, it has been in, in 89 I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So maybe a year later. Yeah. And I meet him in Oslo and we talk and uh, I tell you that I have some riffs on guitar or something and we go to a music shop and uh, in Mörslund, in <laughs> music oh, yeah. in Oslo. That's and still there, actually. Yeah, and uh, I think there. it's up on a. Uh, we went up some stairs. There's some guitars there, and uh, we picked down some, and I start playing some of the stuff I made to Marius, and he's like, "This is cool. This yeah. is uh, real it's cool." Totally different. Yeah, and uh, I think we quickly figure that you come up to Trondheim and we start the Stigma Diabolicum um... I think maybe you yeah I think we maybe did that on the first uh, time we met yeah Actually, I think we yeah. just met and made a Stigma demo <laughs> <laughs> wow it's kind of cool yeah but is that basically only guitars and vocals, or what is that? Yeah, and a drum machine and a, yeah, and the piano down, downstairs is used for a bass, I think. 
Yeah. I'm not sure if I even heard that. No, it's uh, it's pretty primitive, but uh, uh, it's the yeah, start. Stigma, the yeah. yeah, and the songs there develop into the Thorn song, so it's like pre precursor to the yeah. Thorn's demo songs. But did you already have the tremolo kind of riffs there? I don't remember. No, I think oh. that came a bit later. Yeah, I think uh, Ace then teach, or I saw he did that uh, super quick picking. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. So he was the first one then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't, uh, he was doing that before me, I think. Okay. Positively. Um, but I maybe introduced the uh, chords and stuff yeah, and doing. Using the, the, the minor yeah, chord. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, uh, for the nerds, you know, when you have a what do you call it, power chord or yeah, a, power chord. Yeah, just two fingers. Yes. And you turn them, uh, you switch uh, yes. strings, yeah. and you get a minor chord. Yeah. I think that was something we figured out then. That okay. You could, you could do that. Yeah. So it just was like, the yeah, grip. yeah, you could do things on the guitar differently, and you got minor chords. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know music now. Yeah. <laughs> We invented the fucking genre, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, kind of did. Co-invented co this. But how, where did you get inspiration to create those kind of riffs? Uh, where where did it start? Do you remember that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, first, with it wasn't black metal. It wasn't uh, established. So uh, we have, had heard like those bands who played thrash and... Uh, that was cool, but we wanted a little different, maybe, mm. and um, uh, we listened to they other always music. Talk, you always talked about children music. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm coming to. So, um, the coolest music I knew was like this metal stuff, some pop music, and some old children tunes. Especially by Torbjörn Egner, yeah. uh, who is a favorite on uh, th that. We heard a lot of Torbjörn Egner when we were kids, and uh, his music is uh, fabulous. Uh, so we like we thought in the start that we would make uh, demented music for children. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, like uh, music to scare children. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and today... Uh, yeah, yeah, like... Uh, but th those characters are genuine scary. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of scary shit from our childhood in the, in the multimedia Absolutely. department. So, Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, we'll get back to that later, but I'm thinking the same thoughts again. We have to make, like, uh, demented uh, uh, TV for adult children now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For us adults, yeah. Um, so I also I've been in the metal in the tones metal. Uh, I've been uh, writing. It's always been within borders uh, of metal. Yeah. Uh, but also I want to use the Turbjörn Egner style of uh, making melodies. music and melodies. Uh, yeah, you may not uh, guess it, but I'm very fond of melodies, yeah. uh, good melodies. So Me too. Uh, we discussed uh, how bad the Beatles are earlier. <laughs> and you, you think they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're bad. <laughs> That's a good, good anchoring point. Uh, we discussed how bad Beatles are. <laughs> and you disagreed. But uh, there's one song I like uh, with Beatles and it's uh, Yellow Submarine because it has a cool melody. Uh, apart from that, I thought I, I'm thinking they kind of co-destroyed music, as I know it. So you think I like it. I I think they ruined music. So you think Norwegian Wood is a bad track? What's that? It's a Beatles song about Norway. Uh, I suppose <laughs> it's inspired by. It's so, about Norwegian Wood. Yeah. Like morning wood or like probably morning. Yeah. <laughs> evening wood. Evening wood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I thought there were more wood in Sweden, but Beatles don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you haven't heard it all. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, hey, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not fighting for. No, Beatles, no, so I know. I don't I, give it, a shit. It's, but, uh, what do you call a chapas pangelsk? Oh yeah. Wooden horse. Wood horse. Yeah, yeah it's my wooden horse. horse. I just uh, use. I have an antipathy for Beatles. 
Yeah. So, yes. Yes. That's cool. I, and I'm 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 holding on to it just to have something. I have, <laughs> not, just, I have nothing else. I won't I take that from you. Else. I won't take that from you. <laughs> Good. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> so we agree on the Beatles then. Yes. They, they, so Tudor Björn Agnet is better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah? Yes, I yes, agree. Yes, yeah. Good. Yes. Good. <laughs> Settled. Settled. <laughs> Case closed. Okay. So you were just sitting around in your uh, like uh, boyhood room then, yeah. and just figuring out the uh, melodies and riff patterns. Yeah. And uh, I, as soon as I got told on Harald again, because he was abroad, mm. uh, köpte bass och sånt kör, eller? Det hade du. Ja, ja. Jag hade my bass. You, you had my bass when I was yeah. in the US. I think I didn't play it much. No, I, you, have de- you had decorated it when I got it back. Okay. I remember. Decorated it, actually. Yeah, there was... Uh, he had used a marker pen to draw dicks all over. Oh, no. <laughs> that's so thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> Is there a hidden message there somewhere? <laughs> um, I've chosen not to yeah. try to interpret that. <laughs> I was creative. I don't even remember. I. Uh, I guess I did. Yeah. No, but oh. I, I had the bass yeah. before leaving, and and we we didn't play much together for some reason. But we we were kind of we didn't have any fixed bands or anything, so we just circled around playing with friends. Yeah. Uh, in those days. Yeah. I I remember playing Iron Maiden songs with some friends. That was the first thing I learned to play. Mm. Uh, and that you did collectively with the people. Yeah, with uh, some other guys who knew some from, from riffs. school. And yeah, from stuff, school yeah. and stuff. Mm. Uh, but on some point, we, because we had recorded the Stigma demo, mm. and uh, I think we were probably developing the songs and um, at some point we contacted Boar as well. And he came along. I have that. Yeah, he was there before me, so. Yeah, me, yeah. I, I yeah, don't have was. the chronology of this. We're well, talking about Faust now. Yeah, yeah, Faust. Yes. He came from uh, Kvikne. Yeah, he passed through there. Uh, yeah. Last night, actually. So he took the train up and the bus up to where I live. We didn't even bother go to the town to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? He was like 15, 16. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and he came up and uh, we... Uh, we didn't have any drums for him? No, he just came for a visit. Yeah. And uh, uh, the best thing we could deliver after a while was me and Harald playing guitar and bass and sending it to uh, Bor and uh, Faust and uh, Marius. And uh, there you have the Grimmick tape. Okay. So, so that but was didn't just... did play two? Demos with Stigma de Vulgum? No, just one. Just one? Yeah. But uh, just for the fun of it, uh, tell me about the recording session for that one. How, how did that go down? Uh, we probably had a Fostex 4-track uh, cassette recorder yeah. and um, a microphone. And I remember we had a drum machine, we didn't know how to no, get to work. Like this we were just hand trigger hand triggering it. Yes. I think we made, we managed to like hand trigger it so it would go like drrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
and uh, it's first on uh, when I start uh, on Trønder to the school that I get enough uh, instrumentalist to play the songs uh, properly. Properly. Yeah. But I think board recorded one rehearsal. Yeah, we have rehearsals of um, so all of us playing. Yeah. Together. Yeah. That track. Uh, that became uh, Eerie Descent? Several tracks. Several yeah. tracks, yes. Yeah. That's the one time I... You see the scar in my skull here? <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's the door? Yeah, yeah the door. It was a... Um, uh, uh, shelter? Bomb shelter? Bomb shelter. Yeah. So it's very low doors. And with steel and concrete. Ah, and, yeah. and then I had to run out to take the time to see the clock outside the house. Yeah. And I hit my head. In the in the oh. door frame there. Oh shit! And it pulled back the some skin, of the, some of the <laughs> some of the <laughs> skin and flesh yeah. and tissue there. So that's why I have a big scar here. Oh and shit! This little knob. Knob. Extra little love knob. Knob knob. <laughs> oh man. But how did you come up with the riff for uh, that track that would become Eddie the Sense? Uh, yeah, uh, that was uh, inspired by uh, some uh, orchestral music by Tchaikovsky, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, mm -hmm. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Uh, it's like. Is that one? Yeah. yeah. Trying to figure out these notes and uh, figure that I think I've learned or seen a proper uh, guitar accord played mm -hmm. with all the strings on the guitar played at once when you put your fingers at multiple places at once. Yes. You have heard of this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, oh, accord. We used one finger and two fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But no more fingers are used. <laughs> Yeah. To play more strings at once, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we learned this thing called uh, accord. Yes. Um, and also, um, uh, the first accord we learned was the um, A minor, uh, transposed around on the neck. Yes. Uh, and then That's we it. learned uh, E minor, mm. and we stopped there. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Chord-wise, that's the two chords I know on the guitar. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, apart from the standard uh, ones, the power chord and the inverted uh, minor chord. Yeah. Um, and also, we have learned you can lift the third finger mm. and get a... Um, if you transpose the octave to half tones up, you get yes. a something. Evil, yes. more evil sounding stuff. Not more know. evil, but more jazzy. Jazzy, So yeah. we, we try to stay a, a little out of that yeah. at the moment, but uh, we have learned also there's something called major chords. Yeah. Yeah. And we try to incorporate that sometimes. You guys were just clever. To, just, just for variation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you actually use major chords as well? Yeah. Okay. Try to, at least. Yeah. And uh, lately I've been uh, trying to learn a little bit more about the spaghetti western style of playing yeah. and I've seen some videos on YouTube, you heard of YouTube? Yes. Yes, uh, about how to play spaghetti western. <laughs> so, how so, to. Yeah, how to <laughs> play spaghetti western and they use chords as well. Yes. Yes, so there uh, it's, we can use those chords. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so you recorded uh, the Grimmyrk, uh, what happened after that? Nothing. Did you like send it around? Uh, no. Mass copy it or? No. Boarded. <laughs> Boarded? <laughs> yeah, Faust uh, took that job. We didn't think of this as a demo. Okay. We, no, it no, it was just it, yeah. supposed to. A sketch for him. Sketch. Yeah. Sketch for Marius and Boy so they could uh, figure out Vocals lyrics and drums, and, drums yeah. and just have it documented in a way. Wasn't that. Uh, yeah, man, I, I, I remember. Distinctly, that when we heard the board 
started sending this around, we were actually quite annoyed at it. <laughs> yes. Yeah? It's unfinished stuff. Yeah, yeah unfinished. It wasn't, this wasn't the way the songs were supposed to be presented to the world. No. And they weren't finished. And then we, we had just been playing around with this four track. And like, yeah. So, yeah, I remember we were quite annoyed. At this yeah, time. eager bastard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was young. Yeah, he was he young. Was young. But, uh... Wanted to show off. Yeah. But what people seem to like it. But Marius, you you talked about uh, a concert and stuff. What is that close to this period? Yeah, it's actually a little prior because it was under the name Stigma. Okay, Di yes. Diabolicum. Yeah. Tell me about that. It was a proper band, and you did a gig. Yeah. We, uh, uh, did we have a bass player? <coughs> no, no. I so it's only you and me and Bor. Yeah. And uh, Harald told me that you came home the day before. Yeah, I came home from the US and I, the day before. And so I, I didn't make it to the gig. Oh, yeah. You said you wasn't there. I wasn't there. But I don't know who drove us to... Uh, yeah, I know who, who drove us. Okay, yeah. so I don't remember his name, but it was um, made from my school. Uh, he had a bus license. Yeah. So we borrowed a bus. Why did we borrow a bus? <laughs> we had Three people. The, the, the band with us as yeah, well. yeah, there were more bands. This is this, uh, what's it called again? Sult. Sult, yes, yes. Yes, and one more, it was. Uh, Traktor, I remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's one more band, uh, it was Sven Tour and uh, those guys' band, I guess. Huh, was it? Yeah, I think so. I think it was three bands on the. Oh. I don't remember. I, I can't tell for sure. two bands. Then. Yeah, maybe. So, well. Yeah, it was at least Surt and Stigma. Diabolicum. That was your first show? Yeah. Both it's of you? Only, yeah. yeah, first and only. Yeah. <laughs> but how was it? It was terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a good experience. Yeah, it was a good experience. Well, a great experience. Yeah, it was fun. But uh, yeah. when we listen to the tape afterwards, you can hear that Iron Maiden is playing through the PA all the time from a CD or something. Yeah. And, In the background? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I I don't think you can hear what we are doing very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yes, you can. You, you can. can. Yeah, yeah, you can. Absolutely. But um, I just remember the show as uh, as uh, something great and big. Yeah. You know the first show. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> Even if I, uh, as I say, face. You face planted yeah. on the stage. Yeah, and. Uh, Maybe we did some wrong things, I don't know, I don't remember. I don't think anybody knew if there was something played wrong there. So. No, no, no. But when was this? In 90? People or? looked stupid when we played. Yeah. They actually looked stupid, it was like... Didn't get it? No. Mm. We couldn't present the music in a form that they understood. No. <laughs> At all. <laughs> and when was this? 90? Yeah, it must have yeah. been. Yeah. 90. Early summer. Uh, yeah. the, uh, who's, what's the name of that guy that... Um, uh, had the show? Or uh, yeah, uh, uh, was it Kenneth Tiller? Yeah, yeah Kenneth Tiller. Was it was Kenneth Tiller. He used yeah. his money he had saved up <laughs> to make this concert. Oh. And I was feeling bad for him all the time. But he, uh, he wanted to go through with it and yeah. uh, used uh, money for this show. And he did. And, uh, I think he liked it. He was young also. Yeah. Uh, he was very young and eager. To but did he live up in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He okay. was from Trondheim. Yeah, yeah. Or around here. Well, he doesn't have a dialect, right? He, yes. yes. Yes, I think he actually does. I was uh, drunk with Sherlock? him just a few weeks ago and I don't think he spoke with a dialect. Maybe he's, he's lived in Oslo for so long. So yeah. Just... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. He runs uh, Katakomben now, Katakumben. the record okay. shop in Oslo, for it's those who you want to visit that, pick up some albums. In the center of Oslo. Uh, what's the, what is it called again? Eger. That's, yeah, Eger? No, no, Stor no, Stor it's, Stor uh, Stor no, 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 it's uh, Jomstorge. Jomstorge, yeah, of course, of course it is, okay. it's the most yeah. known one. <laughs> okay, uh, retarded. Right next to where I used to work. Yeah, and right below where Stig used to have his shop, Wolf's Lair. Falkvist. Yeah. Mm. Nissefar. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so what's the next step then? 
Um, yeah. Uh, after that, there's. Uh, you went to school. Yeah, I went to school. Uh, Trunder Trun. Yeah. Yes. Where there was a lot of uh, musicians. As a music school, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And arts. And uh, arts and music. Yeah. And culture. And, and culture and stuff. Yep. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was kind of uh, <coughs> developing uh, the, the, what became a descent and the uh, funeral marches to the grave song. And um, I rec we had a studio up there, so. I got a um, drummer friend from there I went to school with called Terje Krober. Mm -hmm. He's also played in uh, some other bands. He's a very, very good drummer. Yeah. He played on uh, all the uh, all recordings of the two songs. Yeah. Because there's two recordings of Eri Descent and one recording of Funeral Marches to the Grave. Okay. Um, and he plays drums on everything. And there's a bass player called uh, Ronny Pritz or Price or something who played the bass. We had made, made, started made, uh, making slap bass on, on uh, some of that stuff just for fuck of it. But were they like metal fans? Yeah, metal they were metal people? fans. Yeah. All of the, the most of the guys uh, on the school there were metal fans. Okay. And there was some jazz and some other useless stuff, but more <laughs> and some rock and some stuff. But uh, metal, uh, there was a lot of metal fans, so we had like rehearsal places and um, a studio and uh, we had uh, fun. And um, yeah, drums, bass and me on guitar and me on vocals on those tracks, yeah. just to get them documented. So um, the bloody next step is Emperor playing our songs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost, uh, because after that there's all uh, um, shitstorm yes. going on. We tried to move to Oslo and uh, get a record, now uh, get a rehearsal place and start working together. Uh, we didn't really do a good job. We didn't. Yeah, nothing did. like happened, right? No. It's for for um, how long? Six uh, months? Yeah, half a year or something. We lived together and uh, was. Uh, but Suppose. we didn't have any money. No, we didn't have money, so we did small jobs and... Uh, you started the shop, right? Yeah. Was that at that Christian time? started the shop, but I was working there with the stand. Yes. Yes. yes, you were a clerk there. Yeah. Yes. So um, we didn't have a good income and we didn't have any place to rehearse and... Uh, uh, I was still playing some guitar on my room. That was the only thing that happened. And then I and Oisten started playing more and more together. And he but was that kind of a mayhem thing, or was no, it, it was the, no, the two of you? Uh, we just like to sit playing guitar together, exchange and riffs, and yeah, ideas. yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so we had a like a healthy thing going on there. Yeah. Um, and uh, after a while in Oslo, I see like ah, it's this is not happening. It's going nowhere. Yeah, it's going nowhere. And Boer is playing with Emperor, and I'm thinking, yeah, he will just spend his time there. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I'm not. You said, born playing with Emperor, I play with Arcturus. Yeah. And you wanted to do something else. Yeah. So you put thorns on ice. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Okay, so it was only that demo at uh, that school, you and that's it. Me. Yeah. I. What happened after I like put thorns on ice is, okay. Uh, Östa needs another guitarist. I don't have. Uh, band project yeah. and I have some songs mm -hmm. and uh, so I after they have recorded the guitars on the Mysteries I joined Mayhem as a second guitarist but in the studio as well no okay uh, but uh, I get all the lyrics yeah. for the album I learn all the songs and do re uh, rehearsals together with Attila when he comes up yeah um, I have the lyrics and I work with uh, a little with Attila and listen to the songs and try to figure out where to have uh, uh, verses and just arranging arranging vocals yeah actually mm -hmm. so um, I uh, joined them in studio together with Attila for the vocal recordings but but I don't play guitar on that album. Well, you're not doing anything no, 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 physical no. on it no and but that's in Giga Holland right mm -hmm. yeah that's in, in Bergen yeah. Yeah. The only thing I have on that album musically, uh, apart from the vocals, is uh, a couple of guitar riffs that was on uh, Torn's demos. Okay. That is then he's playing. Playing. He's, he's on, performing. Yeah. Oh. On the yeah. He 
låt dem fick dem borrow them uh, he borrowed the riffs yeah he borrowed the riffs yes. for his song and that was okay so I was supposed to continue with Mayhem and yeah. use my songs with Mayhem so they had a quicker uh, follow up album from the Mysteries yes uh, but that didn't happen. that didn't happen <laughs> did <right>. it <laughs> but how was the experience in the studio uh, it was fun I really liked uh, hanging with Attila and his uh, girl Nora and um, uh, um, he was uh, fun to hang with and uh, he was performing uh, like outlandishly in the studio um, it's something special yeah it's sure. something special so so i was there when he did that so i don't regret that it was fun yeah, i can imagine how was it working with pitten uh very good as always yeah he's a professional and nice it's so sad that that studio is put down you know yeah yeah he's out of business but I, I do believe he has his own studio now. Uh, yeah, I else. guess so. He's like a sound engineer at his heart, I guess. Yeah, of course. So, so I, I don't think he can live without speakers and a mixer. <laughs> it's only that the location yeah. in that place is, yeah. is put down. And this is actually something I want to... I don't want to make a podcast, but I want to make a video podcast mm -hmm. eventually, maybe. And like practical things in the studios, like how to point your speakers at yourself and stuff like that uh, in the correct way yeah yes. yeah he taught me like yeah you you sh shall not see the sides of the speaker anywhere you should just see the front mm. plate because if you see the sides you have uh, facing effects yeah so use your eyes like that that's a little that's trick. A good, a good advice yeah so uh, it's and uh, it's especially uh, working with uh, Sigur and Satyricon, he has taken me around on all different places that I never uh, would have got to see if yeah. not for him. Yeah. Um, I've been in studios in the States and in the most expensive ones in Oslo and Norway and worked with high class people yeah. with a lot of experience and uh, I try to steal everything I can, so That's especially in information. Yeah. So. Um, I pick up what I can uh, and it's uh, it's very interesting working with him because they uh, they have a production going yeah. like they they have to be finished with these songs until then so their record can be started recording from then to then so it can be released then so it's they can effective. follow it very effective. efficient efficient yes, yes yes very efficient and uh, hardworking uh, and I'm not like that so uh, <laughs> no, so, so you can learn a little uh, <laughs> tricks of the trade uh, how to make the songwriting process we, we have discussed a lot about arranging songs and stuff yeah. um, making things simpler uh, I've probably done some what you call it um, intellectual property into satiricon on their journey after Rebel Extravaganza and uh, after that I've worked a lot with uh, Sigurd. But please uh, tell me how, you, how that started. How yeah, it's, that... It of course started with uh, him coming, uh, offering me a record contract. Okay, for Thorns. Yeah, yes. because I didn't do anything. Uh, I just played around with synthesizers and stuff and didn't have any ambitions. Uh, and he, uh, I don't know if he knew that, but he uh, found me to like check uh, how I did and what I was doing. So he said that like, ah, I have this record company. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you want to make music again, I can put some um, cash on you, so you can get some more equipment, so you can record and uh, do some stuff. And I was like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, why not? And um, he said like, yeah, I can re uh, release anything you do. It doesn't need to be metal. He like, had faith uh, in Yeah, yeah, that. just whatever music you do, it's interesting. So I can find a way for that. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I got some more equipment uh, and a computer to uh, have Cubase on. Yes. Uh, and some simple uh, guitar equipment so I could record guitars and a drum machine and some stuff and uh, started uh, uh, documenting uh, what became Torns vs Emperor yes. and I met up with Samot who had a big band mm. uh, with musicians and all 
Yes. You knew chords <laughs> and the rhythms <laughs> and drums. School. Yeah, people who knew stuff. So um, I thought like, okay, maybe uh, just to get documented the fucking Thorn songs already. Yeah. Uh, because they haven't been documented. So why can't Emperor play the Thorn songs? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, and um, from there the idea developed a little more and we figured, yeah, why don't I do some versions of some Emperor songs and we can mash this together into a release, uh, Taurus vs. Emperor. That's the split. Uh, yeah, right. that's the split. Yes. But when are we talking now? Are we in the 90s? Or yeah, are we... we're in the late 90s. Okay. Yeah. Nin so that was after 95 somewhere. Yeah. 96, 97, 98 ish. So that dropped on Moonfog, the Sigurd yeah. label. Yeah. Yeah. How was the reception on that? Don't remember. I have no idea. Oh? No. I can't remember. Uh, I probably read it, but I can't remember. I, because everything is wiped out by the reception on the um, debut album. Yeah. yeah, because that was kind of well received, I think. And when was that? Some years uh, after? Yeah, this? 2000. Yeah. Or uh, released in 2001, it recorded in 2000. Tell them about that album then. How that yeah, the um, then I had like zero songs in my pocket. Yeah. And I started writing some new ones. And uh, Sigurd is pushing me and uh, hoping that I will be a productive, efficient human being, which I'm not. <laughs> so, um, but he's uh, pushing and helping and uh, discussing and uh, helping and uh, um, uh, I finally finished like six, seven songs or something and I have some parts unfinished and I go to Oslo because we're gonna, going to record this shit. Yeah. Uh, most the proper studio. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. The guitars are recorded um, in advance mm. to a drum track I've made. Yeah. So I have like the demo, and uh, what we are going to record is the drums and the vocals, yeah. um, and mix everything and stuff in the studio. So I go down and visit uh, Hellhammer for a week or fourteen days or something and we work in uh, a week I guess or ten days we work I live with him and we work in Mayhem's uh, recording uh, rehearsal place yeah. and um, figure out the drums for the album and then we go uh, into Oslo uh, to David Eriksson's studio I don't remember what it's called but uh, and we worked there for like 14 days or something with the mix and recording drums and recording vocals. Get Bjorn down there and we have Sigurd in studio all the time. So I think that's done in 14 days, mm. the album. Um, the thing I remember most apart from the recording, uh, it's really nice to do is that there's um, uh, From. Uh, it's a uh, flood. Flood in the, yeah, in the river. In the river. Yeah. And uh, the studio is <laughs> fucking uh, next to Akasharo. <laughs> so, yeah, so we are all the time we are down in the basement checking for water. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't want to be uh, cut off. But of we, uh, we do okay and uh, the album comes out. And the reception is like... Uh, if you do a percentage reception, it's like 97%. Uh, score shit it's people like, were waiting for this yeah and uh, liking it very much I like musical I, th I think I, I, I it's a little rushed and stuff and I have a lot of issues with it but uh, I'm pleased that it became like it did and uh, it's a proper document of what I was doing then yeah yeah yes what would happen after that one after the release um, uh, slowly, yeah, I'm tired af after that uh, session, I remember. I'm like, okay, fuck this for a while. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I want a little break. So I relax, and uh, but eventually stuff starts rolling in the old uh, Doomkopf uh, again. The and, uh, yeah, and um, start making uh, riffs, hmm. like back in 2000 and like 2, 3-ish. 
Yeah. And those riffs are recorded in 2008 and will be released somewhere, sometime in the future. We all of us got to hear the entire thing last night. Yeah. Yeah. That was so great. Did you do something, uh, some other kind of music as well? Yeah, for yeah. Some, uh, for some art show yeah. or something? Yeah. Um, uh, we, uh, I was contacted by uh, Halvor Bodin, who did the cover for the Torns album. Yeah. Because he's also doing some artwork for a uh, Norwegian artist called Bjarne Melgård, who's um, an yeah, experimental uh, painter and scup sculptures and uh, like uh, that kind of art. Yeah. And he uses a lot of black metal references and violence in his uh, art and... Um, um, we decide we are going to make a backtrack, a musical backtrack for uh, one of his exhibitions in Kiel. Uh, so we start uh, meddling uh, around that and figure out, ah, we're going to do this in uh, sound around or surround as it's oh, yeah. called. Yes. But like five speakers around with uh, like five mono sources with violence yes. or um, experimental sound in uh, in full surround and um, all the art uh, exhibitions we have done we have done with multi speaker systems so you like get really immersive uh, experience from it wow. um, so that's uh, cool uh, get to meet artists and Bjarne and hang around with um, Halvor Budin for the trip was that when you traveled a lot, like you told me earlier today? Yeah, yeah, we did uh, some traveling uh, with uh, with that because next time is in um, uh, and the guys doing this with me is uh, Finn Olav Holt and Jon Wesseltoft. Uh, this project with artists and stuff, and Jon also makes a lot of the riffs on the Torns album and has worked a lot with uh -huh. that. Okay. So uh, this is like a collaboration that's not Thorns, but we call it Thorns Limited. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, yeah, so it's like, yeah, it's like um, monkey of Thorns in a way, like yeah. this is what we do on the sideline. Mm -hmm. So that's called Limited. Um, and we, there are some uh, um, releases with it as well on DVDs and CDs and stuff, but it's strange and difficult to obtain. Okay. Yeah. Rare. Rare. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did this uh, then in um, uh, Palais de Tokyo in, uh, in Paris. Yeah. That's a city in uh, French. F f French land. Yes. yes. French land. Yeah. <laughs> France. 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 It's called France. 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 Vive la France. Yes. I, I like Paris. It's yeah, yeah, I nice like city. Paris a lot. Um, and it was a really nice museum and uh, it was really interesting. Just on the sideline there? Yeah. Well, well there. Uh, have you been there several times or that once? That once. Uh, did you ever go to Le Catacombs? No. Do you heard about that? No. You go in the middle of a street, there's a passage mm -hmm. way with um, a staircase that goes down under the street. Yeah. Where uh, almost the entire city is covered by human bones and, oh. and skulls. Nice. Because back in the day... They nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. And then, 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 then we like the death. People are dying, they didn't have spaces in the cemeteries. Yeah, so, so they, they had to stack pack. them. Yeah, they had to stack them, okay. You yeah. need to check that out someday. Yeah. It was eerie. Yeah. Very yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, I nice. I've been there in, in Paris, but I've been to other similar. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. in outside Rome and. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. 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 You can just grab a skull if you want, but uh, you have respect. Uh, so you obviously. Do that. But yeah, it, it yeah. was strange. Corridors <laughs> upon corridors. Yeah. And also in Portugal, I've been to some uh, it's like churches. Yes, so I heard about that. built in, in bones, so all of it is just a shell outside. Like Sora said, nice. Nice, very right. nice. <laughs> uh, so you, you got to do some touring then, yeah. basically. Yeah, not touring. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh, the the show vacations. Va the exhibition. Exhibition, yeah. vacations, uh, hangouts. So the next time is in um, New York Yeah. with uh, Banks Violet. 
um, artist from New York, and we also do a surround piece for his piece. Yeah. And after that, we um, are contacted by a curator called Klaus uh, Hoffman. Klaus, I can check that. I, I wonder if it's Klaus Hoffman. Uh, he's curating uh, the Biennial uh, in Santa Fe, at uh, Site Santa Fe, mm. and he wants us to have a piece on our own, a room there. So we. Um, That's in the making. No, that was. Uh, it's, it's after, that, this is uh, this has happened. Yes, yes, yes. It's back in some time. Yeah. Um, just a room with the, with the music? Yeah, and it's really cool. With and the speakers around. Yes, surround in the, around you and you have like blank, uh, like cushions and uh, cover. Oh, puta, how can I find a puta? Yeah, cushion. Cushions. cushions, yeah, cushions. Pillows. Cushions on the floor so yeah. you can like hang out there, dim light. So people said afterwards that this room you made was the place they spent most time and enjoyed the most because they just hanged out there and heard yeah. our musical piece which was like kind of a self-generating uh, uh, system with we worked with layers like yeah. a base layers and a mid layer and a top layer or a, we called it a vertical layer because it's more in your face uh, so you had these layers working uh, on top of each other uh, randomly so you always got a new result in your air. So, and it was everything from like silent stuff to hardcore uh, violence. So, what are we talking analog analog synth? Now? Yeah, most analog synths and synthesizers and recordings and uh, also instruments. We did a lot of pitch down bass with fuss, like yeah. just walls with. Uh, uh, noise exploring <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was so it's very nice like soundscapes exper experience of soundscapes when you're in a dark room with surround speakers and you can hang out there all day do some psychedelics. This is not for kids, is it? Yeah, sure it is. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> So you just hang out there all day watching a cartoon on your cell phone, listening to music and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Cool. And after that uh, also Klaus Utman. Yeah, it's Utman. I have a book by him here somewhere. Yeah, he's Klaus Utman. He curated us for another piece in uh, Limerick in Ireland. Uh, so we went there as well. Hmm. So we have been on several places with these art projects doing different uh, not so what you call it when we do the metal we are so narrow and so thorough and so precise mm -hmm. but when we do this art stuff we're not. <laughs> <laughs> so on some recordings we have done outside my bedroom window at night yeah. towards the graveyard and there's in the middle of the night, some drunk girls come passing by, talking, and that's in there as well. Yeah, because we didn't have time re uh, editing stuff so badly. So we let... We, well, it's loose. Yeah. Looser. And that's nice, working with looser things when you work with, like, anal uh, metal all the time. Yeah. But is that still going on? Not so much because I don't. I feel like the time I have uh, to put into music now, I want to do music a little more serious than before. But because before I didn't want to be a musician, yeah. I want to have a different income. Yeah. Because I don't want to live like a lousy artist, um, even though I do and am. <laughs> uh, but I want to. I don't want to have that lousy artist musician life. I want to have a proper income. I want to be a quantum mechanic or something like that. Yeah. I want to do physics, but I'm not doing it. So now I have my chance in life is to do what I know, and what I know is make awkward music. So I'll make a lot of awkward music, I think. But I want to do stuff that's uh, not uh, income worthy. I want to put my time in something like the Torns album which can sell 
uh, which uh, income. yeah, it's, it's something that can provide a little more income on uh, the long run. Yes, because these projects are like yeah, you get paid, you get to travel, and uh, maybe you get some pocket money for the work you do, but uh, it's not much. Would you consider to do it live? Uh, what uh, like uh, yeah yeah later yeah yeah just have to finish up. Stuff. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We heard it last night. It yeah, sounds yeah. pretty complete. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty complete. It's just need to get the vocal tracks done and the mix done and uh, draw a ugly cover and uh, we're there. But has the most um, most effective work on that progression be, be, been now these later times on uh, that Thor, Thor's album? Uh, no, it's been like, um, what do you call it? Uh, evenly spread out? No, not evenly spread out, but more in uh, etapa, like in bulks. Oh yeah? Yeah, okay. uh, it's been like working bulks here and there, uh, and long periods without anything. So you're inside one of those bulks now? Yeah, yeah, and now it's the lyrical bulk. That's the last one? Yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah. That's the last one. There, there will be a little uh, work, I might do some changes to the arrangements to make them fit the vocals. And do some like final uh, cuts to the songs, but uh, it's all recorded. It's all. Uh, you don't have to re-record anything. No, no, no. Yeah, Don't everything. I have to take everything again. No, 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 no. <laughs> come on, come on now. Because no. you, I've seen you on stage at least once, I think. I even said hi to you back yeah. then. It was at a satirical show. Yeah, at you least were. once. I've seen you at stage at least once. I've been on stage once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, two, two times. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> if it was that time he face planted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I played live then. Yeah, I played yeah, live sometimes. Yeah, 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 I can't say anything one about it. Many years. times I've been uh, on stage. Many times I've done uh, Trondheim competition in rock and roll even. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we played drums for a band. Yeah, I, I played was drums. in yeah. uh, when we were in the Trondheim competition for rock. Is that UKM? Like uh, yeah. no, it was before UKM existed. I think. Well, it was um, for kids or yeah, yeah, teenagers. For, yeah. And it was like all the metal people coming there to play. They they were always inspired by by Metallica and, and Armin and tried to play as long songs and, and as possible. We were inspired by a Napalm Death, so we <laughs> played short. Yeah, we it was even in the newspaper that uh, Monskut Mux, which was the name of the band at the time, um, was the most efficient band, they, uh, after 11 seconds, they let us scream and left the stage. <laughs> <laughs> that was us. Awesome. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you are, you are motivated to bring it to the stage then? That's, no, that's, that's not good motivated, news. but I, uh, I think maybe we you should. You will. I will, because a lot of people are motivated and uh, I don't have um, any other job uh, here on earth than to provide for my kids and uh, apart from that I uh, hear a lot of people are uh, getting happier by listening to the music that we make so yes. uh, it's a good thing it's a positive yeah, it's, thing it's a good thing to do and uh, positive is a weird word in this context, yeah I know but, uh, that's I know. what it is but yeah uh, I think it will be a um, win-win situation for uh, both the band playing it and the uh, audience listening to it and then we have done that. We can do some shows but we won't do tours. No, but just imagine uh, like a, a festival yeah, and that income. Yeah, yeah. Right there. I think like if we if we do like we decide... Vakken or Hellfest or whatever Yeah, we're it going is. to do like live shows one summer. Yeah, maybe. And then we rehearse uh, half a year or something to get that going and then we do festivals or shows or I'm even thinking, oh, I, why can't come people come to us? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, just hire some place in Trondheim or Oslo or any place and just say we play shows here uh, two nights, one night off, two nights, one night off. Yeah. And sell tickets. Uh, yeah, like a Torns festival. But that's it's not good because people have to travel, and that's people not, will do that. Too, yeah, but yeah, but that's not good. Uh, it's better we travel to them or. Uh, but that's that's a good thing. Yeah, because we have. To, yeah. But is it is it the band we listened to on the tape yesterday that will be that live band, the the same people? Yeah. Who is that again? Uh, it's Kenneth Copstar on drums and uh, myself and. Um, 
Christian Broholt om gitar, uh, Jon om bass, Jon Wesseldoft who is writing together with me, and uh, Björn on vocals yeah. for the live, I guess. So that's a lineup at least we can use. Uh, you have a band? Yeah, I have a band. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we haven't played together in 10 years. No. Yeah. We yeah. played before, the, we rehearsed a lot before the um, uh, uh, recording of the album and I have videos. <laughs> you do? Yeah, yeah, of course. I have recordings of all the rehearsals and everything. So oh, cool. I've been better this time to like document, do document a little... Uh, Can we have a sneak peek of that later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After we shut off the recorder? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Whatever. I want a beer. Yeah, it's time, I think. You have yeah, a beer, Marius. Please. Be our bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Mm. What, what, what was your beer again? Uh, some Pilsner, that's cool. Mm. Yeah, in the, whatever it is. It's in the, in the fridge, actually. It's in the fridge? Yeah, it's in the fridge. I think you have ones there, too. No? Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Have for a peek. Reminding me. Have a peek. It's so I have seven beers. Yeah, it's beer o'clock over here, man. Mm. I made myself a Patreon page. You have one? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I, I haven't put anything out there yet. I've just. Uh, no, but hey, hey, uh, sorry. Send me uh, on the text the, yeah. the link. I'll yeah. put it in here. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I can use because. Um, oh, thanks. which one? This yeah. one. This one. The big one. Snorre. Dals. No, no. Dals pills. That's. Uh, Trunderpils. Yeah, that's the uh, local one. Skål, så var det. Yeah, cheers. Um, Thank you so much for having us. And me in particular. <laughs> you, you in particular. Yeah, the first one, the first <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah. It's my first time. So thank you so much. It's nice meeting you. But we, need, we can't quit yet. We need nope. to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. Have you come? Is there any more we can catch up on up to this time? Yeah, the only thing I think we forgot is uh, Sigurd... Uh, yeah, you didn't talk much about Satyricon relation. Actually. Yeah, that's that's so much. We have done so much together. Uh, Roughly then. Yeah, it's been like... Um, uh, Sigurd and I have like exchanged a lot of uh, thoughts and ideas around uh, everything from... Uh, everything... Uh, considering music and production and uh, writing and uh, because he's like lived the whole package. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's full, full on. Uh, he's full on uh, and full of information and uh, full of thoughts and uh, and we have uh, exchanged a lot of uh, work related uh, stuff and helped out each other because he's been like a mentor for Thorns. And he's used me like a, a sparring partner on his writing when he writes music. Because when we listened to the album last night, I told you that there's yeah. there's huge similarities between that and what I've heard Satyricon do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's DNA all over the place. Yeah, yeah. He's open on that. That is really inspired by the uh, yeah by by my music. Even the drums. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the way Frost. Yeah, music. yeah, yeah. Uh, because we discussed a lot about drummers and drums and how to do music better. Yeah. Uh, or more what we want. But Frost is something special. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, awesome, definitely uh, yeah. something special. And yes. um, uh, he's one kind of drummer, and Kenneth, my drummer, is totally different. Yeah. So, um, different people. Yeah. Makes sense. So, um, but did you, you played on a lot of satirical recordings, right? Not a lot. Uh, I played a lot on uh, Age of Nero. I think I saw some video of that, actually. Okay. That you yeah. were standing and strumming some... Yeah, maybe. I can't remember I can't where deny, I seen that. I can't I deny think, anything. <laughs> maybe maybe Sigurd and... Peter. Yeah, maybe because he has... Um, that was in LA, right? Yeah. At uh, Joe Beres' studio. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. was fucking awesome. Yeah, sorry, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Please swear. <laughs> For helvete. <laughs> For helvete. <laughs> For helvete. Hell. Um, yeah, that was cool. How long did you stay, spend in LA? 14 days. How was it? Uh, did it, you check it out? Did you not much, not much. We were mostly in the studio, but uh, 
And uh, Joe Buresi took me around and we drove Mulholland Drive and we went out to, up to Hollywood and we uh, went out to a bar and I saw one celebrity. Who? Ron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Jeremy. I've uh, seen him too. Right yeah, here. yeah, that's the, the only celebrity I saw in Hollywood. It was Ron rainbow. Jeremy. So, uh, yeah. I actually shook, shook his hand once. Yeah, nice, nice. And now he's uh, gone for good. Yeah, he's, he's gone, locked up. Now. Yeah, his dick is faded away. <laughs> yeah, he's, done. <laughs> he's done his job. <laughs> but what part of LA is that studio located? Um. Is it on the is it, is it on the Sunset Strip side of the hills or the other side on the north side of the hills? I don't really know. It was it Pasadena. Pasadena. I'm is that north no. of the hills? It doesn't really matter. But uh, no, I don't remember. I'm just curious. Yeah, I think the area was called Pasadena. Yeah, that, that sounds right. Yeah, and it was a nice area. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I heard you couldn't. Drive through other areas. I uh, I've been there. Uh, we played some shows over there. Luckily, mm -hmm. but we one time we went downtown. Yeah. And we drove through, you know, a Skid Row. Oh. Where people live on the street in tents. Yeah. I saw a lot of people with uh, what do you call them? Car car carriers. Shop carriers. Okay. Yeah. Like wheeled shop trolleys with all their stash in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Uh, yeah. And they live in tents and shooting smack. That's yeah. what they do. Yeah, and in uh, New York you don't see anything. You don't see a weird person at all. No. It's clean. Yeah. Never been to New York. I want to go there. And sure. uh, Santa Fe was cool. Uh, New Mexico. Yeah. Been there neither. Once. Do you know I, I shouldn't go to the States. I lie on that card every time. Ooh. I don't have any uh, sentence, never Criminal been involved uh, with background. anything, They're not crazy in the head at all, <laughs> no relatives crazy, no... <laughs> <laughs> lie, 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 lie. Nah, that doesn't matter. Would you go back? I don't, maybe. Uh, For a show, perhaps? I, with thorns? Maybe. Yeah, but for... Uh, I, that doesn't count almost. You have to be on a place for a week, I think, before it counts. I like oh, if you I want like to experience hang out. it. Yeah, 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 I like to hang Absolutely. out places for long. Absolutely. And be on the local diner and hang with the locals. That's the fun part. Okay, also, can I almost see that? Satyricon was we were in. Ah, and you were in LA. Yeah, yes. LA with Satyricon. Yeah. Or Ron Jeremy. Or on Jeremy, yeah, yeah. That's the combo right there. Yeah, and uh, Mulholland Drive and uh, LA and LA and LA. So I've seen LA, yeah, cool. and I've played a lot of cool guitars there. Yeah. Because ESP came with their uh, best guitars and, uh, and delivered to the studio. Yeah. Okay. So we tried out all the top models and picked out the best ones. Mm. And kept playing them for uh, on the album. Yeah. And I even bought myself one ESP after that. Yes. For my own, so I have one. Uh, the one I liked most. Um, and I traveled back home. Alright. Yeah, we did some. No, that was with the Torns Limited stuff. Uh, we've been to Ireland, but with Sigur, yeah, he's pulled me into the studio many times. Yeah. So you're sparring off each other. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So last uh, valuable uh, thing uh, he's pulled me into is the Monk project. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, it's, uh, he have done, I think it's running now. Isn't it open, the uh, museum and everything? I'm not sure. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Have you been there? No. No? Tell us about that if you can. Yeah, the, what uh, I can is that uh, he's doing a lot on synthesizers. Okay. With guitars and synthesizers, drum machines, uh, all uh, high class analog stuff from the studio of... Uh, 
uh, Erik Junggren. Yes. And uh, I've seen and played with all his toys. And uh, from that I've uh, learned uh, that um, <clears throat> I also should step out of the digital synthesizer world and uh, spend all uh, my lifeblood on uh, analog uh, synthesizer modules and cables. <laughs> you have a lot of them. Yeah. Mm. So um, I learned uh, a lot there and uh, he helped me over the doorstep go into the analog uh, realm of synthesizers at yeah. least. Because I I play a lot with synthesizers and uh, um, a lot of the things I've been wanting to do have been difficult because you have to hack the digital one to do what you want it to do. So now I just have cables and uh, control voltages and gates. Oh. Um, that's easier. So I can do more um, of the things I'm thinking of. So mm. fuck things up more. Yeah. But that, that project, is that basically only noise and sounds? Or is it no, that, songs? Um, Munk thing? Yeah, Munk uh, project, uh, it's Satyricon. It's a Satyricon Yeah, thing. it will become a Satyricon album also, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so limited? Uh, yes, uh, almost, <laughs> but uh, he doesn't use the limited uh, part, he just, uh, I think he said uh, to, <laughs> to Frost that if you want to make something for it, it has to be on uh, the level of Sylvester Anfang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to make something really in two, in, um, not intuitive, but um, what do you call it? New. Make something uh, innovative, in innovative, innovative uh, yeah. and um, uh, really great. If it's if you want to make something for this, unless he will use like the drum machines and stuff and samples. I don't know how he makes the. But what the part I've been uh, working with is I played some uh, small bit guitar. Mm. And I've been playing around with the drum uh, stuff yeah. and uh, with the um, synthesizer stuff and I haven't done much on that uh, Monk project at all. I've just been lucky to get... Be included. To, be, to visit in the studio. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, and yeah. I think he likes to have me around when he work with music, so... Like, good company. Yeah. Muse. <laughs> You're a muse. Yeah. I suppose. So it's a full on metal album? No. Basically? Yeah, you have to listen. I can't uh, describe it in good words. Well, I will talk to Sigurd. And yeah, ask yeah, him you have directly. to. Uh, yeah, you have to listen to it, yep. I think. Because but uh, any idea when it will be ready for the public? Uh, maybe it is. Because oh. it's supposed to go uh, on the Monk, Monk uh, Museum. Yeah. Yeah. We should check that out. Yeah. As a background music? Or, no, or it's, it's a, a big... Uh, yeah, you will, it's a room there where it's... Uh, will be... Uh, he has curated um, what uh, paintings are hanging there. It's a big, big room. Yeah. And uh, his muse, uh, Satyricon's music is uh, playing. Okay. Cool. Have you made any riffs for that? Nope. No? Only if I'm lucky, the... maybe I've touched a drum uh, module, uh, made a bass drum. And maybe a wee or a wah, but not much. Just the spice and sprinkles. No, not really. I've just been uh, amused. Yeah, yes. Uh, but because this has been a long, long, long project and I've been uh, there for like a one percentage of the time. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. So that's the la latest thing you've done then. Nope. Nope. Nope, because uh, it's some months since I've been there now, and I've had Bjorn up doing vocals here. Yes. For the Torns album, mm -hmm. and we recorded uh, a lot of tracks. We have to do some fresh ups on a couple so I guess we do a um, second round with vocals with Bjorn and um, uh, I'm doing uh, the God Mode project which is, which is uh, like a silly uh, 
um, fuck off to hip hop and fuck off to music and to all the human beings uh, in this time of uh, because we're from the future uh, it will uh, land on you uh, somewhere in the future yes um, but we're, I'm working on that project which is uh, it will be like um, uh, hip hop metal uh, parody okay. that's that's that may be the best description on that. You heard that last night too, right? Yeah, you heard some of that, but not with much vocals and stuff. Just no. the, the beats. The beats, stuff. yeah. That's so it's good, dark, uh, heavy beats. Absolutely. Uh, with the grimy synthesizer, and we'll have like fucked up vocals on there, yeah. and make silly videos and put them on TikTok. TikTok! That's the new big thing, <laughs> That's guys. The new big thing. Uh, or YouTube. So. Just uh, being clowns for the public. I think that will do you good, actually. Yeah, I think so too. So that's the silly project, and the more serious one apart from Torns, because that's the heavy shit I have on my shoulder all the time. Yeah. Um, uh, I started together with Kenneth Kapsta, the drummer uh, of Torns and uh, the drummer of everything, the mother of all drummers. <laughs> Um, we have started up a um, project called Just Stigma, yeah. which um, started off with me having some ideas to do more like the old style Grimmirk Stigma, childish uh, children music, uh, silly fucked up music, metal stuff thing, thing. Mm -hmm. And um, he was uh, thinking about doing some specific rhythm patterns pulled out of some strange folk music from a specific place in Norway. Yeah. Where uh, if you listen to that specific type of specific music from that specific place, place from that specific point of time, you, you will hear that there's like there's stuff in there that's really devilish. Yeah. And really like wild and um, and there's elements in there that you will um, they, uh, you can recognize in uh, what uh, Satyricon has done when they do folkish things. What every much of the folk music inspirational things lies the DNA lies in that okay. uh, specific time and yeah. specific place. Um, Schlott og springer av fra Setesdal og Telemark. Oh. Uh, that's where he pulls, wanted to pull out for a doctor degree he wanted to do. On yeah, you the, said that. Yeah, yes. on yeah. those specific rhythms and uh, stuff. And we're discussing this and uh, put uh, one and one and a half together and we get five. Yeah. So um, uh, we started Stigma again. Uh, as uh, I wanted to do more synthesizer stuff uh, with like uh, old school synthesizer ugly stuff and ugly music with guitars and ugly rhythms. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I didn't play that for you last night. I have one. I played some of the Stigma songs, yep. which are like um, comprehensible uh, and easy to listen to. And he'll, but we also want to. Um, push uh, a little on that rhythm part. So uh, what I didn't play for you, I'll play later. Cool. And it's some rhythms you have made that's not so easy to like make. A bit more challenging. Yeah, a, little, a bit more challenging. For a listener too. I yeah, uh, yeah, hmm. for everyone. <laughs> yeah, man. Cool. Yeah, so, so we want to, to experiment with that. So um, that's the experimental uh, thing with um, where we do the crossover with the folk stuff together with the uh, old uh, computer game music and the uh, guitars yeah. uh, in Grimmirk style uh, um, collaboration ish and see what happens. Um, and also with I thought that this stigma could be a, like an umbrella organization for all the if someone wanted to do some 
uh, other stuff that was not either politically correct or wrong in their uh, metals. Ice. Ice. Yeah. They could do it under the stigma umbrella. We can be the back band for <laughs> for That's other fucked up uh, cool project. Idea. Yeah. So when I sent one of these tracks to Attila, he started to sing on it in English. So I think like, okay, I have to finish the track first. Mm. And I have to tell Attila, you have to sing in uh, Norwegian or in uh, Hungarian. Yes. Um, then we can do that under... That's a stigma song. Ah, oh, great. So, that doesn't need to be... Um, There's no rules. No rules. And uh, the songs don't need to be almost... They, they, they need to be finished songs. Yeah. Uh, almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, so we can push out more frequent stuff through that uh, hole mm -hmm. than through the thorns hole because the thorns hole has to be a little tighter. You need to finish it, man. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But um, I need to have some fun on the spare. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. And also this stigma project will be in Norwegian and it will um, be, uh, I think... Um, mixture of blasphemy and psychiatry. Yeah. That's the uh, lyrically. It will be uh, a lot of psychiatry and a lot of blasphemy and uh, and in in Norwegian <laughs> and in rhyme and uh, the music will be proper fucked up. So as you heard, it will uh, kick ass. Any idea when any of this will be able to come out and people can hear it? Yeah, I can guess, but my guesses are uh, laughable. But Stigma will probably see the light of day before Thorns. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah? Yeah. I will have a full-on video production studio before Thorns is released. <laughs> yeah, there is, yes. <laughs> Uh, with the green screens knows, and everything. Knows, yeah, with yeah. the green screen and everything. TikTok. Yeah, TikTok Look out, videos. Man. Yeah. We have uh, already uh, a lot of blockbuster songs ready. Sure do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Do you have anything... Uh, is there anything we missed? Uh, don't know. That you come to think of? Guys? You're still around? Mm. We're still here. Yeah. Nice of you. Is there anything we should bring up? Or have we covered mostly everything? I can't think of anything. I'm just tired. You're just tired? <laughs> Drink your beer, smile. <laughs> it's Saturday. Want to listen to music. Yeah, we yeah, we should do that. Yeah. Hey, Storia, thank you very yeah. much. And uh, you are uh, you are an inspiration. Thank you. Honest. And you seem to be an undrainable source of material as well. Yeah, my uh, head is filled with... Uh, I don't have time to push out everything I think about, so... But I'm not alone with that. I know more people who have a lot of ideas. But yeah. Creative. With, yeah, creative person. I can't wait to hear stuff mm. out in the public, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Soon enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's because you don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we'll shut it off right now. Bye-bye. Bye, guys and girls. And it's an uh, aliens and uh, everything, every life form is acceptable. <clears throat>